Hi, I'm Vivia Gugnani and welcome to RN74, a European-inspired wine bar in the heart of San Francisco. Here, creative but simple interpretations of regional French cuisine are perfectly complemented with an expansive wine list. So let's go behind the burner and meet the chef. I'm here with executive chef Jason Berthold. Jason, I see beautiful tomatoes, red and green. What are we doing That's with right. them? We're making heirloom tomato salad today. These are beautiful heirloom tomatoes that are just now coming into season here in Northern California. And these are actually a variety called purple pineapple. I think one of the most important tips that I could recommend to people is when you're selecting heirloom tomatoes, uh, kind of pick the ugliest ones uh, over the prettiest ones because they're, they're, uh, they're tomatoes that are grown for their flavor, not necessarily their design and appearance. Another thing that I think is very important, um, and I suppose it would be sort of a, a technique that I could share with people, is that uh, when you're using beautiful tomatoes like this that have great texture and great, great flavor, I think it's very important to not slice them too small or too thin. So you can get all of that flavor in your palate. Right. I would slice a minimum of half an inch thick. So how do you feel about seeds? Leave them in. I noticed that your chopping board is not moving an inch. Yeah, I suppose another tip to share with people at home is that it's always a good idea to put a wet towel under the cutting board, which sort of helps it stay in place. So now that the tomatoes are cut, what's next? Seasoning. Salt and pepper is all it takes. Um, I like to use a coarse sea salt. This is called sel gris, which is a gray salt. Uh, it comes from, from France. And I like it for its texture, and I think it has a very assertive, um, very minerally sort of flavor. It's a very special salt. It's, it's actually not too difficult to find. You can find it in most gourmet stores and not very expensive either. I love sea salt because it really gives you the flavors of the ocean. And I like the fact that it's coarse because I like to crunch on it. And the pepper, fresh ground pepper, of course. Uh, just takes a little bit over the top. Once you get accustomed to having a pepper mill at the house with fresh peppercorns, you'll never go back. You can do this any number of ways, but just because it's summer, uh, hopefully people will be cooking outside. It's a simple dish. It can just be placed very simply on a large plate. It's perfect if you want to do a platter of this for a group. I think it's also great for individual plates. Now we're making the fromage blanc. Fromage blanc is just a fresh cheese, uh, like making a ricotta at home. It's very simple. Uh, it should not be something that intimidates people. It's kind of fun to make. What we've done here is we've taken uh, milk, just straight milk, whole milk. Uh, it's great if you can get it from, from the farmer's market, the fresher the better. Um, and we've heated it on the stove to 175 degrees. And it's important that you use a thermometer for this because that temperature is critical. To that milk, we've added the vinegar. And the vinegar coagulates the proteins in the milk and it gives us the curds. We allow that to cool to room temperature for an hour or more. And we're going to strain off the curds from the whey. The longer you let it drain, the drier the fromage blanc will be. And the firmer it's going to be. It's right. going to have that dense texture. So this will take an hour or more and it'll be finished. So this is some fromage blanc that I made earlier today, which is now ready to go. You can see the consistency of it. It's very creamy. Uh, if I were to let it hang longer, or overnight even, it would be much harder and you could crumble it. Uh, right. I chose to stop it and, and leave some of the moisture in it so we can have a nice creamy spread. And this is kind of something that is important because we're going to serve the dish as a composed salad today, but you could also make bruschetta or sandwiches out of this as well. And then for plating, all we're going to do is simply put little dollops of this onto the plate. It looks so nice and light and airy. Okay, so now we're going to make the Bagnoles vinaigrette. We're going to start this with a little bit of Dijon mustard, a touch of salt, using an aged Bagnoles vinegar. And Bagnoles vinegar comes from the uh, Languedoc region of France, where they make Bagnoles wine. This is mostly Grenache, and this is turned into vinegar. But it's very special because I think Beautiful. it carries a lot of a lot of fruit flavor. It's very round. Stir that up with the mustard and salt. Another tip that I would that I would recommend is, is investing in a high quality extra virgin olive oil. You hear people say it all the time, but it's really true. Um, one bottle of olive oil that you keep in your cupboard that's maybe $25 or $30 will last you a long time and it goes a long way with raw preparations like this. So what we'll do is we'll just emulsify the oil in as you're stirring uh, and we'll create a very light emulsification. If you want a creamier, uh, more emulsified vinaigrette, you can use a whisk or you can even use a blender if you want to make a larger amount and get that, that creamy mouthfeel. And then to finish the dish, we'll take our vinaigrette that we've made and just sort of nap it over the tomatoes a little bit. But just a little bit to tie it all together, it's great. And then we've got this beautiful baby arugula here. And because of the vinaigrette and because of the sweetness of the tomatoes, I'm not even going to dress this. Is that really the balance between a little bit of the bitterness of the arugula and the sweetness of the tomato and the pungency of the vinaigrette? And then lastly for the dish. My missing ingredient. Yes, the bread you've been waiting for. This is uh, just country bread, which is a uh, nice rustic bread that we've grilled. We've just seasoned it with a little bit of olive oil, a touch of salt, and grilled. So you can serve this on the side. Not to miss these beautiful <laughs> crosshatch marks. This is the um, look of a professional. 
and that's the that's the salad. I'm Here's ready to eat it. So I'm removing my what looks like a train ticket because I'm ready to eat. Great. It goes with the whole train theme here. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I certainly get the, um, the sweetness of the tomatoes, first and foremost, um, as well as the texture. I think the texture can actually emphasize the, the taste of things a lot of times. Rule number one, never refrigerate your tomatoes. No matter how bad they may look, <laughs> always keep them at room temperature. For this dish, I've chosen a Chardonnay from the Jura region. This is uh, from Tissot, uh, from Arbois, and I think it pairs really nicely with the tomatoes themselves, as well as the fromage blanc and a little bit of uh, acid from Daniel's vinaigrette. And the cheese was gorgeous. So, cheers and thank you for having us. Cheers, you're welcome. What is this interesting board behind me? This is our last bottle board, and you can see there are eight different wines listed up there each day. And it's the last of a bin, last of a case. Maybe we had three bottles of something that was very rare and special, and we're down to one. So what we do each day is we put those bottles on that board. And they're marked down from their normal retail value. And when somebody purchases a bottle off of this board, it flips over and the next bottle on the last, uh, the last bottle board goes on. So that's great. You can come in here and one of the attractions is your wonderful food and cuisine. And the other is looking at this board and find your last bottle. Stay tuned to Behind the Burner where we give you the tips, tricks and techniques that are lighting the culinary world on fire.